welcome to the session. It's great to have you join us today. Um, as Julie mentioned, my name is Sopna Naya and um, I'm working at LinkedIn. I look after the education team globally uh, and manage a number of different uh, live, live sessions. So um, it's great to kind of be here with you today to talk about our LinkedIn uh, best practices. So our agenda really is to think about how you use uh, LinkedIn ad formats, all our great creative, and think about what that means, for example, um, to create uh, great compelling content. And once we, once we have those pillars in place to think about then maximizing your engagement um, through areas such as thought leadership, um, as Jodie was mentioning. So to get started, I thought it'd be great to also just set the scene a little, little bit about LinkedIn and um, who we are and uh, what we do. Um, LinkedIn's a pretty unique uh, hybrid uh, hybrid platform. It's um, the social channel of choice for B2B marketers, one of the, the world's largest content publishing platforms. And last year, we reached 1 billion members. So it's a fantastic place to make connections. Um, and there's so much activity now on LinkedIn. I'm sure you all have seen in through your feed, through the content ecosystem. So we've seen some great increases in um, viral actions and in-feed actions, um, and the content impressions on LinkedIn are, are really doing, uh, doing so well. So the knowledge ecosystem is something on LinkedIn that you can also tap into as it's pretty unparalleled. Um, and at LinkedIn, just to give you an idea of our culture and the things that we care about, um, there's a clear distinction at LinkedIn between our vision and our mission. So um, we, we really want to inspire and create a shared uh, sense of purpose throughout our company. And that means our vision for the last 20 years has been to create um, opportunity for every member of the, of the global workforce. And then our mission is very much linked to that, to that objective, um, to be measurable and inspirational. So we want to connect um, all of the world's professionals to make them really productive and, and successful. So a bit of background about what makes LinkedIn tick and, and why I enjoy working, working here. So first up on the agenda um, is best practices. And this is, I'm sorry, it's gonna be going a bit fast there. And this is where we're gonna deep dive into the ways in which we use the variety of ad formats um, to best effect for your marketing strategy. So I'll take you through this as you, as you, as we, as you listen, happy for you to kind of pop into the chat some questions. We'll try and take those uh, along the way and we've got time at the end as well to do that. So um, when we want to think about how to make the best use of LinkedIn, it's worthwhile maybe taking a step back and seeing how content sits at the heart of everything that we do as marketers. So one thing to think about initially is how do we stop the scroll? So um, according to some, um, to a lot of data now, around 6,000 ads are kind of seen by any individual at any given time per day. So one thing to think about is actually how your audience thinks what they actually need, um, does it resonate? And potentially, is it something that they actually need? So it has to be kind of thumb stopping or, or scroll stopping. Um, so we're thinking about, you know, making uh, your content and creative really visually impactful using visual elements and all those great um, creatives that you, that you have. Um, and then we want to also think about um, your own expertise. So how do you showcase your offering effectively and um, showcase your credibility when you're actually providing that uh, creative and that, and that ad format? And then finally, it's also about providing a unique perspective. And this comes through a lot in our thought leadership ad we'll talk about um, in due course. <clears throat> How's what you're saying to your, um, to your customers and prospective customers different and authentic to, to you as an organization um, and, to your, and to your brand. And on that final point, these are some of the things we can think about in terms of content that are, that are really important. And members really want to kind of see from us um, some different angles and perspectives. So the first thing that we found is that it's great to focus on the industry that you're in. And that means um, giving a point of view, um, current affairs, insights into new products and trends going on in the industry that your, your company is situated in. The other perspective that is great is actually your own perspective. So we're seeing more and more how employees and, um, and other, other people are branding themselves in terms of their career, um, their learnings, their areas of growth, and their own thought leadership. 
And then finally, um, it's great to also provide a behind the scenes look into your own company culture. So what's happening around your company, giving that employee voice to think to, to kind of bring life to the things that the company is proud of and really keen to showcase um, to, to um, their, 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 their clients and customers. So as we think about the content um, and, and LinkedIn in particular, one thing we have to kind of go back to is your, is your LinkedIn page. So a couple of best practices here in terms of your real um, starting point. So your LinkedIn page is going to be kind of the, the core um, foundation to start informing your community about your brand and helping um, join in conversations with them. So if you're going to get onto Campaign Manager, if you're going to launch paid LinkedIn ad campaigns, this is your starting point. And you want to be able to define your goal when creating your LinkedIn page. So a couple of best practices. Um, some might sound a little obvious, but it's just good to remember as well. Um, if you have a LinkedIn page that is fully complete with uh, great descriptions and very, very clear as to your goal, pages with complete information we've seen get 30% more weekly views. So it's a great starting point. From there, you'd want to think about posting. So we've seen that companies that post around four times a week see twice the lifting in engagement in their social actions. So likes and comments and reposts and shares. And then you'll need to get started with your audience. <clears throat> so you're, you're going to have a minimum of 150 followers on the page. And then you can start having that um, true growth in terms of followership. And then after you've done all of that, go back into Campaign Manager. And what you'll see there is your page analytics um, dashboard. And you can actually monitor the impact of your organic efforts to really understand which content to promote with your ad budget. So that's your foundation. And then we, then we look at actually our core um, range of ad formats. And what we call this at LinkedIn is your, your sponsored content suite. So we're gonna learn how to select the different ad formats to achieve the best results for, for your brand. A couple of best practices before you get started. We know you need a LinkedIn page, so we've got that active. Then we want to think about the length of your copy, so it's a good place to start. Keep it snappy. Um, images and video work super well. Make sure that they're really relevant and clear to the product and service that, you, that you're offering. And the call to action should really make, make sure it matches the content that you put out and that you're clear on what, on, on what you want people to do. From there, you can go into Campaign Manager and select your target audience. So LinkedIn has a pool of, of a billion member audience now, but you're going to want to think about how you actually target appropriately. And we have a variety of different attributes to do that. You can target by company, by their size, by their function, by people's job experience, by their skills, by demographics. So make sure you have access to Campaign Manager and you can get started with that. When you're on Campaign Manager, we're going to have to always think about LinkedIn's um, objective buying flow. So as you get started, make sure that you understand where you sit in that funnel, because your goal will determine everything you do on LinkedIn following, following that point. So our first objective is going to be brand awareness. You might be looking at top of funnel content to make sure your business is known to the right audience. So you've got blog posts or ungated content at that point. Down the funnel, your next objective is consideration on LinkedIn. So if you're choosing that, you want to kind of nurture your audience in that middle funnel uh, with content there. And then the final phase is conversions. So you might select that. And that's where you really want to be converting your leads and prospects into, into customers. So you want to think about how you how you sit in your when you're creating your ad and your campaign, where you sit in those in those objectives and select it appropriately. Um, as you get started. So our paid content, our paid strategy rather, hinges around sponsored content. Um, as you get started, you'll know that your ads are going to be shown within the LinkedIn newsfeed. You've probably all seen that very, very clearly. But there's one other option as well, which you can enable the LinkedIn audience network. So it's really simple to enable, just a simple uh, tick box. And then your ads are shown on the LinkedIn newsfeed and on that broader network of, of partners. So it's really going to help you reach um, reach audiences across multiple touch points 
um, across trusted publishers as well. So do think about how you might want to scale and reach um, other audiences using um, the audience network as well. So what um, ad formats do we actually want to, what to think about? So first of all, we want to figure out how we can blend our um, organic and paid um, media strategy. And what we've actually seen is that if you have um, page followers who, who have both exposures, they're 61% more likely to convert. So that interplay between organic and paid media is, is really is really powerful. But why is that? Why is that the case? There's a couple of reasons. So if you have both organic and paid efforts on LinkedIn, it contributes to building um, a brand that your audience will want to engage with. There's a shared objective between the two organic and paid um, pieces. You then have this kind of common audience between them. So your organic audience on, on the left hand side there might be a bit smaller, um, but as they're nurtured through that organic strategy, um, they will then become part of that larger paid um, paid pool. So existing customers and prospective buyers. And so your audience is really moving quite freely between, between organic and paid interactions. So they're, not, they're hopefully not seeing um, those messages as separate actually. And I'll give you some examples of what that looks like. Okay. So one example um, I can show you here, just let me move that on, um, is to use um, emotion across your posts, both organic and paid. So this is a really nice example from Slack. And Slack is the, the comms platform um, that many of you might use. So what we're talking about here is that emotion isn't just around member posts or um, organic company pages. Actually, what they've done here in this example is optimize content for far more reactions. And they saw an uplift in, in performance um, in performance through that. So they've kind of bet here on a more um, human messaging, um, a shared kindness messaging across both organic and paid, but there's a seamless transition between, between the two. So do think about how we can maybe use that um, in, your, in your campaigns going forward. So one, one example of uh, one of our ad formats is going to be the single image ad. Um, so you may be using this already, but the, 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 the purpose of this is that you have um, a very clear um, call to action, kind of uh, really relevant uh, images come, come to the force here. You want some really nice, bold, eye-catching colors on this. You can use single image on desktop or mobile. Um, and you want to kind of have clear headlines, clear CTA to really use this to the best effect um, on, on LinkedIn. If you want something more interactive, you've also got the option to use your, your video ads as well. So this is really thinking about creating a more rich vision of your, of your, of your brand, of your client's brand, maybe even thinking about um, positioning as a, as a thought leader. The very versatile ad format, as you can see here, and what's great is that if you can actually um, add on your lead gen form to the to the to the end of it, it's a great way of integrating and capturing those leads um, once you've set this up. So a very popular ad format on LinkedIn, um, along with single image ads as well. So great to kind of think about how you can use that use that there. The other other option that you might have used already. Um, so it is the is a carousel ad, and this is kind of <clears throat> composed of multiple cards. You can either deep dive on one product or one service, um, or choose to kind of highlight many, many different things card by card. You can actually see in Campaign Manager how well your campaign is doing card by card. So you can get really creative with customization in this. You can use unique images and captions and links to tell an interactive story. Uh, both on desktop um, or mobile. And potentially the idea behind this is that as you've created that story and you've got that, that um, story arc going, um, your, your customers are more likely to want to then see what's next. You can then lead them to a landing page or website. So really great way to kind of create a, a story arc and add in a lead gen form um, as well on this too. And then document ads have seen um, some great results um, over the last kind of 18 months or so. 
Um, what I love about this really is that you're um, enabling your members to really uh, stay within LinkedIn to read the content that you're providing. So what you're doing essentially here is you're offering um, any reports, any um, ebooks, slides, um, right in the feed. <clears throat> and again, mobile and desktop is perfectly fine, but it's a seamless experience. Members will read directly on, on LinkedIn. They're not being slowed down or being sent by, um, sent off to a different website. Um, again, you can, you can gate it and you can collect some really great, great leads on this too. So thinking back to our, um, our funnel, um, you can build awareness through this. You can nurture your audience in the middle of the funnel as well here. So keen to know if you're, if you're using any of these ad formats and, and, how you, and how you've been getting on with them and happy to also chat through um, in our Q&A about these. So that's kind of how it all works. Um, and then bringing it all together, just to, um, some focusing in on best practices on how we really want to use, use them to the best effect. So single images are going to rely on your original images. So one, some things I've seen that have really worked are things like stats, really clear facts uh, on the image, very relevant to the, to the organization or to the, to the offer. So keep it really, really uh, clear, reduce as much text as possible. Um, carousel ads, think about how you want people to click through. You, the further people go to the end of the carousel, the more likely they are to actually get to a website and, uh, and get to, the, get to um, the reason that you've put that ad out there and make sure you have a really captivating story. For video, one thing to remember is that the video will autoplay on mute. Think about subtitles, making sure it's very, very clear that they're visible on there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And best practice would say that, you know, under 60 seconds is good. And I think in the first kind of 10 milliseconds is where you've got people kind of um, listening and getting their attention. The next kind of, you know, 200 milliseconds is around really thinking about getting that memory structure going and people making sure that they really remember what you're what you're saying. So don't make the video uh, video too long. Document ads, best practice here would be um, have your cover page really, really eye-catching as well. Similar to the single image, actually. Is it easy to read? Is it mobile optimized um, so that people actually um, can get, get the information that you're providing? So those are kind of, that's a summary of kind of how you would use all the ad formats um, in, the, in the suite to the best effect. And just thinking a little bit about lead gen, I've kind of mentioned this a little bit um, already, but when you actually uh, attach a lead gen form to any of our um, ad formats, think about think about two things. Um, is there a good enough exchange? Is the offer high value enough for the prospect to give their details in exchange? And secondly, um, have you been kind of warming up the audience with awareness? So hopefully that brand awareness is really clear. Um, so you, you don't want to have too much content gated early on. And then as the content becomes gated, maybe then you can ask for your lead gen um, form to come in come into play. And hopefully then the prospect can actually become a lead. So, and then a, a quick summary on screen around, um, which I've discussed already, just a reminder there around your CTA, around your target audience and around the messaging as well. Okay. And then one other option that you might want to also use, um, which is focused more on desktop than, than mobile, is your dynamic ad. And what's great about a dynamic ad is that it's being pretty much personalized um, for the individual based on their profile data. Um, so you can really boost awareness and engagement and conversion. It's a good way, as you can see, of maybe combining the dynamic ad with another of the ad formats I just discussed as well. So we, you can think about how you kind of blend that going forward. As you get started, do think about your target audience. So um, we have um, multiple attributes um, that you can kind of start to build it out, whether that's your professional characteristics. So you might want to think about your um, targeting by, by, by job function, uh, by job title, um, by the company size or industry, um, and even by location. So the demographic options as well. So just build it out first. 
that works, that's what that's kind of starting point for, for dynamic ads. And I think two key uh, options um, for this audience would be really, really useful um, in under dynamic ads. One is your follow ad. That's great for driving engagement to a LinkedIn page. So essentially what you're doing here on the left-hand side is you're promoting either your LinkedIn page or your showcase page um, so you're wanting to convert your LinkedIn members into engaged followers. Uh, on the on the right hand side there, you've got more of your spotlight ads. So you're wanting to showcase a product or a service or even an event. Um, and that means that once they click, they've either requested a demo, they've joined an event, they've downloaded some content. So a really nice way of driving those conversions or even building brand awareness. So just two options there in terms of, of your ad formats there. So we built out the, the, the core pillars of how to uh, think about creating ads um, on LinkedIn and thinking about all the objectives. We want to think about now how you actually build out what is compelling content as well. So a good place to start is going to be your uh, organic strategy. Excuse me. And how we think about that. Um, Start, uh, that, that starting point. So on LinkedIn, we'd say that you would uh, build out your company page first. Um, with organic, it's all about building and nurturing that professional community. Uh, next part is going to be making the, the content really creative and emotional and distinctive. And then finally, we're going to think about kind of the more um, push tactics. So using the employee voice, using hashtags, using uh, A-B testing. So I thought I could show a couple of examples of how how we can, how this has been successful on LinkedIn. Um, so Accenture, as an example here, had uh, a great showcase page. And what they've actually done is segment it by audience. So what they've done is they've got the strategy um, operations arm, technology arm. So, they had the core company page with the kind of the famous logo, um, but the HR and comms team here really focused on employer branding um, and nurturing prospective talent. So they had a, a separate uh, showcase page uh, focused on building and nurturing different audiences within the within their buying committee. Um, so they created a, a showcase page here, which you can see that also housed um, thought leadership and content that was more geared towards their strategy teams. And they also nurtured a community of tech developers and engineers with content about technology. So just a nice example of thinking about how you can also segment audiences and really focus on, in, on your employer branding. Because actually when we look at um, data around this, um, a few years ago, Nielsen did a study, as you can see on, on screen, and all the elements of, of campaign effectiveness and the findings were, were pretty remarkable. So nearly half of the effectiveness of any campaign you launch is dependent on creativity. So yes, brand equity and your reach and your targeting is really, really important. But what we're seeing is creative is, is a really important driver of, of relevance um, for every community you nurture. So some examples of, of creating that compelling content um, to look at some more examples here. Um, one is that you can use um, content that creates a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Um, so in this case, when you, when you think about your organic content, uh, you really need to think about your audience here. So this was a really successful campaign by Infoses. Uh, and it wasn't really, as you can see, it wasn't really focused on just um, a service or a product. It was actually using uh, what emphasis it was using um, kind of humorous cartoons to call out um, how people work in IT. So there's no real sales objective here. It's just social content that nurtures a community with a bit of bit of humor. Um, another example from Accenture around a community, and they focus more on employer community here. So um, it wasn't just a case study of, of what the client was doing. Um, they actually took an extra step and looked at their employee um, base and brought to the forefront as um, who the employees were and their own story. So a really nice example of being creative through showing that sense of sense of community. Another way to do this um, is kind of 
celebration, um, showcasing success. Um, these are two examples um, from India that also show the element of localization. So, um, so here there was um, the agency social beat. They kind of welcomed a new employee with, an, with a lovely post. And then the Tata um, example kind of celebrated a particular region. So you can also think about tagging employees, their teams, their managers in the post that can then really share to the network and increase the organic reach. So some really nice examples of how you can play around with community through belonging, through, through your kind of successes and showcasing the best of your uh, employee base as well. But I think the, the thread that kind of connects all of this is really around how you can use emotion um, within your creative. And why do we why do we kind of think about that? Because I think you know we're kind of wired to remember emotions, not facts. So when you want to connect with your audience, you know you can kind of help to stay top of mind um, by kind of thinking and tapping into that uh, emotional um, structure there. So key attributes to think about as you um, build out creative to make sure that the um, there's a, a storytelling arc. So you can use characters, you can use mascots to build the anticipation. Think about the context that you're showcasing your ad campaign. Is it trend inspired? Is it socially optimized? Um, is it topical? Some other examples can be data inspiration. So how do you use clever use of data insights in the creative? Um, is it localized, is it authentic? How do you make that relevant as well? So think about all of those kinds of mix of things to increase your share of mind. And the reason that we say that is that um, people buy brands with that high mental availability. So we're building that um, share of voice that the whole way through as well. Okay. And then we want to think also about um, maximizing uh, engagement. So we've got all the pillars in place. We've thought about the um, objectives and the ad formats, um, and then the compelling creative. So then we want to think about turning that strategy into engagement. So one thing to think about is thought leadership and influencer marketing and how that can actually help drive engagement and, and report. So what, what we've actually seen at LinkedIn is that we've got 80% or more of B2B marketers are using or working with influencers, um, and that can really drive, um, drive brand recall. But the reason why there's a there's a kind of lean towards this kind of avenue is that many people um, trust people that they've seen on LinkedIn. It's a credible voice. So they really want to think about um, how they can leverage kind of thought leadership um, in this space. So at LinkedIn, we have um, thought leader ads. They've been running for, for, around, for around a year now. Um, and they essentially promote authentic content uh, from real employees, but also it's not just your employee base anymore. It can be, for example, you are running an event, an external speaker um, is posting, you can also use those posts. So a thought lead around is essentially taking um, a post, an example here um, from TIA, it's an organic post um, that, was, that was put out. And then the, the post is then used through the company page and it's promoted by the company itself. So you'll have that tagline promoted by. But the reason it's working pretty well is that you've got, it's got authentic content from real employees. You're generating that, that brand trust. Um, it's sharing unique perspectives from your industry experts or your top talent. And it's a great way to grow community around, around thought leaders as well. But what I like about this one is that the, they're using kind of a very bold imagery, very linked to what they're, what they're talking about. Great statistic to kind of draw the attention in. So the creative is, is really, really on point. We also wanted to talk through some examples um, that Jody will just take us through on the thought leadership side. So I'll just um, share that with you as well. Thanks, Sopna. And uh, I don't necessarily want to position myself as a self-proclaimed thought leader, but um, at, at Propeller, we like to sort of practice what we preach. So I think when we first heard about the thought leadership ads, we wanted to um, to test it and trial it. So um, what we often do when we're sharing 
posts for clients if, if we see an organic post performing well we can then often boost that to give it extra reach uh, and in this particular case it's an example of where uh, we we tried out trialed a, a thought leader ad uh, so i posted something to talk about thought leader ads and then we allocated it um, with some budget behind it to um, to boost that um, and i guess as a, as a guide in terms of kpi um engagement that we can look for you know three to five percent uh, as, as a sort of click-through rate is often uh, a, a good um, level for a typical ad. Um, 7% is generally regarded as, as high performance. Um, and in this particular case, I think we were driving through more like 14%. So it was it was achieving double what a, what a standard company um, post would do. So I think it's definitely a good one to do and, and it can really help play nicely with the organic stuff if you are getting key leaders and uh, employees to post uh, company insights as well and thought leadership. So definitely a good one that we'd, we'd recommend um, to include as part of your, your mix. Um, we're gonna sort of then move on to another example and I'm conscious there's a few questions in the chat as well. So I guess uh, Sopna, while you've got a, a couple of seconds for <laughs> breath, uh, you, you can um, look through a couple of those because a few of these will interlink particularly, um, there's a couple of questions around followers and. Uh, and sort of guides on formats and and, and budget um but here, here's an example uh where uh samson ads uh europe has, has done uh, a post uh, that is calling out a, a specific persona so um samson ads provides services through I, I guess sort of samson tv um to allow uh, agencies in particular to uh to reach audiences through um samson ads um, so therefore, media planners are a key audience for them. Um, so this is a good example of actually calling out the job title of the persona you're trying to engage with in the ad. Obviously, this needs to link with the targeting there. But from a lead generation point of view, um, giving that specific focus around your personas and calling out the job titles, we've seen really high effectiveness there uh, in, in terms of sort of um, being able to target your ads and, and really make impact. Uh, and obviously the creative is an important factor, but but actually the, the relevance and, and calling out the job titles can really give you that high performance for, particularly for lead gen uh, campaigns. Lovely, thanks. Thanks, Jody. I'm just looking at the questions. Um, and there's just one coming in from, from Victoria. I'm trying to answer it in the, in the chat, but also it's quite a good example of how um, Victoria is kind of toggling between follower ad and other creative ad formats. And um, in terms of best practice, I think you're doing what you're doing is great. So you're starting with the follower ads, but maybe actually the thought leader ad will be the next best thing for you to, to, to move on to here because you've got that opportunity to kind of grow the followership, it's linked to the company page. And that's a really, really great way to kind of switch between, between the two. So thanks for that great question. Um, I see a couple of things around sharing the content, which is fine. So we can come back to that. Yeah, there's one also just on, on I think, video format as well. And we've got yes. well, so we've got um, Alistair on the LinkedIn team joining us as well. So you may want to, to chip in, but yeah, just we're, we're coming up to pan time. And uh, I guess a good example of, of, of content uh, and I'll put a link in the, the, the chat here just for a post we've done today which I think is just one a sort of a tip more on organic um, social but for us it's just building some frequency to what you're doing consistency and so sort the of most important thing sort of adding value to the people that, that are reading your your posts so each year we produce a, a can fringe event list um, which takes a fair amount of time from the team to research but then becomes a very useful document for anyone attending can and at the moment we're up to 750 fringe events uh, that you can find out so I'll share the post shortly but it's one that we've done this morning and already it's pretty high in terms of clicks likes and engagement uh, we also tip when you are making organic posts if you are getting people responding and feeding back make sure you comment back and reply quickly because it can just help build um, more engagement around the post um, but but around can we we did some video interviews for a client last year and therefore we sort of thought a lot of people will be at can watching um the the posts and and seeing stuff on their phones so i think i think there's a couple of bits that, that um the linkedin team can sort of provide guidance on what what are the best sizes but we did find that if we know a lot of people are going to be accessing on on their mobiles then 
the format that, that makes it sort of appear better in the phone can be a good option um, to, to mean that, that if you know you're going to be activating around an event with people dialing in, uh, that, that can be a route to take. So I, th I think generally there's a couple of formats there, which I think Alistair has just uh, responded on. Um, but yeah, just a, a bit that we'd add, particularly as CAN is coming up and a lot of people will be digesting your content on the phone. So think about making sure you're maximizing image sizes and video sizes um, that are mobile friendly. Fabulous. Okay. So yeah, lots of questions coming into the chat. So we can wrap up the core, the core content and just think about what where what we've covered off so far. Um, so we've kind of talked through a number of the kind of building blocks for, for great content for great engagement. So keep on thinking about your starting point on campaign manager, making sure your goal and objective is really, really clear. And then diversify your creative through multiple ad formats through that emotive content, through your targeting, and then you can kind of blend your organic and paid efforts um, the whole way through. So some great questions coming through around what you can do. So happy to kind of take those take those at the moment. Um, and then maybe Alistair, you can also just um, point us to where we might have any missed anything in terms of questions and we'll go through there. Lovely Jodie, thanks for the cans post, that's wonderful. Good questions around um, using um, Gen AI to kind of draft both organic and paid copy. Um, and Sarah, yes, it's probably best to think about actually what makes something look look authentic. And so you're probably going to want to not um, want to post something that looks like it's come from a Gen AI um, production. I'm getting rather tired of ads full of rocket emojis. Yes, ag agreed. So I think um, it's not about when we're standing out or standing out more or less. It's actually making sure that everything that we do in terms of content um, has an authentic voice, that there's a consistency to it. Some of the best thought leaders, for example, that I've seen on LinkedIn use their own perspective consistently. Their posts have that really nice thread throughout them. Um, so, of course, AI is going to help with creating some of that content if you, if you like, but adding in that human lens is obviously going, going to be so important. Um, Alistair, thanks for the, for the video ratios there. Um, Maninda, thanks for your comment around uh, text ads, thought leader ads, that's great. Okay, we can just um, wait and see if there are any other questions coming through then, um, Amrali, Jody. Yeah, please feel free if anyone wants to either put the question in the chat or if you just want to um, jump straight in. We, we thought this format's nice and interactive, so if anyone does want to uh, just ask a question directly, then either raise your hands or, or just um, just go for it. Yeah, good to, good to hear from you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I guess it, there was one question sort of around just around budget spend and, and trying to, to guide on, on I guess, sort of give a feel for indicative budgets. Um, so, I mean, certainly for things like the follower ads and and you know, we, we often will combine um, always on sort of dynamic ads with, with increasing followers for clients, plus then some targeted stuff. I think that that's really helped us um, for certain clients to be able to sort of develop the audience in the way we need it to. So, for example, if, if a... a a client is targeting sort of multiple countries uh, across Europe, they may find that follower growth needs needs a bit of boosting in, in certain regions. So therefore, it's allowed us to really target the follower growth. So you get a nice blended mix and, and not just the number there, but the, the, the good quality there, as well as sort of specific job roles or particular industries we might be looking to target. Um, I, I guess sort of for us, we found sort of probably an average cost um Per follower, it's probably ranged sort of between the sort of five to ten pound mark as a, as a sort of follower gain. So, therefore, if you're adding a budget and, and sort of looking to increase um, hundreds of thousands of followers, that can work very nicely in tandem with your organic activity as well and, and give you that really targeted boost. But um, I, I guess sort of in terms of spend and and putting together campaigns, that's often one of the things that people are a little bit unsure of and and can probably try dipping their toe in and maybe not being as effective as they could be with spend. But is, is, is there any sort of guidance on that around sort of typical budgets for campaigns or sort of type of, of cost per lead 
to factor in or, or sort of minimum budgets to, to have in mind. I might need Alistair's help yeah. on this one, if that's okay. No, if you wouldn't mind jumping in, Alistair. I can speak to that in a little bit. I, I think the, the question around budget is always a tough one, uh, as it will always differ depending on the brand's needs and the audience size that they're working with. But if we had to take a ballpark number estimate, we often suggest starting uh, with a 5,000 per campaign line. Um, that's just the baseline that we often use to test any new beta features, beta products, to ensure that there's enough data to understand some of the nuances against your uh, strategy and your uh, audience so that you're able to take learnings that is both statistically significant, but also helpful to help drive some of the tactics that you have moving forward. So if you had to look at as a baseline minim minimum for a campaign line, uh, I'd work with that. Uh, from a CPL standpoint, again, it's it's dependent entirely on the scale of the audience that you're, you're working with, because ultimately it's a probability game. So the more you have within your audience pool, the higher the likelihood you'll have to drive more leads. And in turn, the resulting um, factor would be the average CPL against the total volume that you delivered. So uh, there are different um, ways that we can look at that. And I think to measure yourself against your own audience would be the healthiest approach as opposed to measuring yourself against someone's, I guess, highlights. Um, but it's definitely something to, to consider. Great, thank you. And and I guess we, you talked about the different stages of awareness, sort of through to consideration and conversion. Um, I guess it would be useful in terms of guidance around that as well, in terms of sort of how how those interlink timeframes you work. Do you go from one stage directly to the other? Um, this is stuff. I guess we we're working sort of day to day with a lot of our clients, but good to hear sort of the the, the best practice from LinkedIn directly. Um, and I guess some of the people that on this call may not have done any LinkedIn advertising so it's good to sort of just provide I guess the uh, sort of tips and best practice to get started around that sure did you want me to speak to that or is that more of a follow-up thing that yeah, you'd want us to share um, I, I guess it's sort of, even if you're just sort of looking at if, if someone's thinking about a campaign because certainly we're sort of able to help with that but looking at, at sort of typically how you would run those stages sort of concurrently time frames so trying to give give everyone a bit of a sense of what budget might be um sort of a realistic level for the someone to start a campaign but also just the time frames you know how, how long would you need to run something for what's what's the sort of breathing space for each of those stages and, and how does it sort of run so if there's anything you can share again as a sort of ballpark or top line i think that would be useful for i guess yeah. people on the court who haven't yet done any linkedin advertising for sure, yeah. Um, I, I think it, it depends on the positioning of the brand. Um, so some brands have a healthier um, presence online and as a, as a wider brand across other channels as well. So if they have historical um, campaigns that have ran not just on LinkedIn, but also across other channels, then there is a case to be made that within an awareness stage, they already have a little bit of... Um, footing um but if you're starting from scratch then groundwork is a little bit different i think from a budgetary perspective it's again it, it's 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 one of those questions where how long is a piece of string um you can spend as little or as much um but i think what we always say is to start now and then take it from there um if you were to go back to what we discussed regarding what's a baseline minimum if you want to test a campaign starting with 5k over a period of if we want to compute against the efficiency we are seeing anything um, above 100 pound daily from a campaign perspective multiplied by the duration that you want to run your campaign for is what will give you a baseline minimum um, the reason why we say 100 pound daily is because it is an auction so what you want as a brand is to be able to compete to win that auction against other brands who are also trying to reach the same members um, if you're starting with a healthier level of brand baseline uh, where you're a little bit more familiar you have more skin in the game then you can not necessarily 
rely overly rely on brand awareness, but start to think about how you can look to nurture some of those audiences at yeah. different stages of the funnel. But there is there's ways for us to to tackle that um, more tactically, depending on the time of the season. Um, and depending on when the buying the life cycle stages of the brand is. So we can definitely work with propeller uh, on that case to to figure out what's optimal uh, and when and for how long. Uh, but again, I think just starting is probably what we'd always recommend and then to take learnings from there. Yeah. And I think certainly the way we'll tend to look at it with clients is, is look at, um, there's obviously a lot of testing and iteration you'll do from trying to work out what copy and creative is going to resonate best, but to try and join it all up as a campaign. So therefore you've got sort of multiple iterations uh, of, of ads going and you're you're sort of giving the campaigns enough time to live and breathe. And, and I guess there's always a little bit at the beginning where it takes a bit for the the, the campaign to actually sort of level out. So one one challenge can be if you if you're sort of testing different ideas on a on a sort of single basis and then doing a lot of pausing and unpausing and stopping and and changing campaigns that that can be ineffective. So I think key thing is yeah testing but doing it with a clear focus and commitment to a time frame uh, and and a budget within that. Um, there's been uh, I guess sort of a, a couple of questions that obviously have come up around AI. So that obviously that's an interesting one. To see how that shapes up for LinkedIn. Whether it's sort of people using the AI within LinkedIn or, or, or sort of AI tools that feed into it. Um, I think it's definitely a very careful one to do to avoid all those emojis and, and very repetitive words that, that pop up in far too many posts at the moment. Um, but certainly there's, there's, I think I found it's been very good for efficiency of, of sort of reformatting content you've already written uh, and, and sort of bringing that down into more sort of impactful posts. And I think, uh, Sophie, you made the point of just making sure whether it's ads or posts, you, you keep the characters and word count um, short and impactful. So um, I, I think definitely the it will be interesting to see where the tools do go and, and how that can help sort of make us even more efficient and effective. But yeah, I think definitely one to be careful on, on sort of popping too much into AI and then sort of not sort of losing that impact um, and, and also just not looking like everyone else's ads. Um, I guess we're sort of coming to the end of the session, but some really good good stuff that's, that's being shared today. We will be sharing video and uh, the key takeaways with everyone. Um, if there's any final questions, please put them in the chat or feel free to say, but otherwise I, I think someone has really appreciate your time today. And there's, I think, loads of learning access that you pointed people in the direction of. Absolutely. You can go on to Marty Labs. It's a great way to kind of get learning and get started with that if people want to kind of use it as a springboard onwards. That's wonderful. But yeah, great. Some great questions and engagement and great, uh, great to be on with you all today.